who got it. Um, to quickly introduce ourselves, um, I'm Harriet. I'm a senior data scientist at um, NHS England. Joe, do you want to quickly say hello? Yeah, hi there. I'm Joe. Um, I am also a senior data science at um, NHS England. Cool. Hello. Uh, and this is a space for you to introduce yourself. So um, if you do want to um, say hello in the chat, please do so. Um, a little bit of housekeeping. If you've got a question or an issue um, along the way, please put your hand up um, and uh, one of us will um, alert the other and we can let you uh, chip in uh, or uh, put your point in the chat um, and um, the one of us who isn't presenting will try and respond to you as well. We've got a couple of breaks. Um, one, two, three, four. We've got four breaks. Um, so um, if you feel like you need to go grab a water or go to Lille or whatever, there will be um, time for you to do that because we know it's quite a, a long session um, today. To tell you in brief of what we're going to cover, um, we're going to introduce the concepts of um, CICD, continuous integration, continuous deployment, uh, specifically in GitHub, so GitHub Actions. We're going to create with you four workflows um one which prints hello world one which runs a pi test um one that creates a draft pr and one that creates a draft release uh, and then we're also going to discover how to use environment variables and github secrets i'm hoping that um all of you got um our pre um pre uh, event instructions, which were just to make sure that you've got an account with GitHub um, and also that uh, you have the link to the repository that Joe set up. Um, if not, I'm sure Joe can share it in the chat if uh, he hasn't already done so. So I'm going to do this along with you. And we're first going to go to the link that Joe is sharing to the GitHub Actions Workshop repository on the NHSR community's GitHub. Um, so feel free to follow this uh, along with me. You can see um, that um, this is our very simple repository here. Uh, and for those of you who aren't aware, repository is just a name for a kind of project um project of code uh essentially like a kind of super folder that contains everything you've got um in uh your project um not routinely things like data um but it's mostly where your code is stored um and in the context of um version control um and git your repository is where um everything it, it, all of the changes to all of your um uh, code can be tracked and you can um, follow along uh, with every um, contribution that different people make to that project. So what we're going to do um, is we're not going to clone the repo for those of you who are familiar with what that means. Um, uh, we're going to fork the repo. So to do this, I'm just going to click on this button here. And it's going to ask me um, to create a new fork. Um, and a fork is just a copy of a repo. I am uh, going to store this fork of this workshop um, in my own area. This is me here. This is my username. Um, and I'm going to make sure that this box here is unticked. This is because um, we're going to do a bit of work today in looking at um, uh, uh, kind of interactions with both um, the develop branch and a live branch, which are two branches on this repo. So I just want to keep all of the branches that we've got um, in this repo today. And I'm going to create a fork here. Okay, so you can now see this is my icon here, you can now see that this is a fork of the repo in my own area rather than 
um, uh, in the NHSR community organization here. Um, you can see here that it says that my developed branch isn't protected. What this means, um, and some of you may already know this, so um, apologies for, for reiterating this, but hopefully it's a useful reminder, is just that um, uh, the, the, the developed branch, which is one of the main branches that we're going to be working on today, um, doesn't have any restrictions in place um, about kind of directly um, integrating changes into it without requiring any kind of review or anything like that. Um, so I am going to add some protections to this branch. Um, and I'm going to make sure that we've got um, uh, protection in place that means that uh, before changes can be integrated onto the branch, um, we have to make something called a pull request, which is essentially just um, uh, an alert that displays all of the changes that are going to be made and allows um, for a kind of full review of what those changes are before integrating them into this branch. Um, I'm also going to require status checks to parge before that merge can happen. Um, for, for the purposes of this um, workshop, this just means that when we've got some status checks in place, um, uh, they must uh, pass before we can merge onto this branch. Um, so I'm going to create that rule for the develop branch. And I'm also going to create that role for the live branch. Is that correct, Joe? This, that's the name of this branch. Yes, that's correct. Um, by the way, we've got some um, additional people that I've just um, I just noticed that were in the waiting room, so I've omitted them. Um, so um, for uh, actually, yeah, right, would you be able to quickly sure. show them um, how to fork again? Sure. So. Um, the link that Joe has put in the chat and shared earlier via email is to this um, repository here, which is the GitHub Actions workshop in the NHSR community organization. And to fork, um, you just have to click this button here uh, and create a new fork. Just be careful that you make sure that this box is unticked because we do want to um, copy the other branches over um, before you create the fork. Um, and what I've, what I've done additionally is add some branch protections. It's not essential for you to do if you're not familiar with that, but it is good practice um, um, to do that. Um, so there we have it. We've got our fork of um, our repo. Um, and now you have essentially everything that you need um, to start with us as we start um, adding some GitHub actions to this workflow. But um, before I do that, I'm going to actually explain what GitHub Actions are um, and um, a little bit more about CICD and how it can um, be useful for you. Basically, why we're doing this workshop in the first place. OK. So. CICD stands for um, Continuous Integration, Continuous Deployment. Um, it's a bit of a mouthful, which is why it's called CICD. <laughs> um, and it um, encompasses processes that automate the integration of code uh, into a repository, um, automatically testing any changes that that integration introduces and then deploying that code um, into a production environment. Uh, and I appreciate that some of you will not necessarily um, be too familiar with any of those words, um, for example, production environment. And don't worry if this seems all a little bit abstract, um, because this is kind of what we're here to try and um, uh, unpick. CICD is a modern development, modern software development principle. Um, so if you search for it online, you're often greeted with um, explainers that are maybe more geared towards um, software developers and, and programmers, not necessarily your analyst and your data analyst specifically. So it can be quite hard to understand what it means um, and how it can be useful, which is what we're here for. 
the best way to kind of explain um, CICD is to basically explain how it can be useful for you. Um, it reaps most rewards when you're collaborating on a project with others. So if you're um, working on a project uh, with your colleague, let's call her um, Anastasia. Um, Anastasia and you might have very different approaches to coding. You might have very different styles. Um, you uh, might sometimes be in a bit of a rush and not do um, certain things to your code. You might not like check certain things that you might want to, um, which may make collaboration quite difficult. Um, and um, what CICD can help do is establish um, a kind of standard for both of your code, but it can also automate some of the kind of more manual checks and testing to make sure that you're both kind of operating in a consistent way to um, work on the same thing together. That's the kind of most um, useful part of how CICD can help in a kind of like analytical setting. Um, but one of the points of this workshop is to um, um, get you to actually start doing it. And it, through the process of doing that, you'll be able to kind of get a bit more of a feeling for when it can be useful um, in your own work. So as I touched on, um, Formatting code to an agreed standard is something that CICD can be really, really helpful with. Um, you um, can set up something called, uh, well, you can set up automatic linting. Um, so what linting is, is a kind of, it's a bit like a spell and grammar checker, um, but for um, code in that it, chain, it checks your code um, for basic programming errors. So kind of for those of you who are familiar with Python, white spaces are real problems if you've accidentally left a space where you shouldn't have done, um, uh, as well as kind of stylistic errors. Um, some of you will be um, very familiar to using um, single apostrophes to um, mark that something is a string, um, uh, so, so, so a text type. Um, some of you will be using double apostrophes or inverted commas um and it really bugs people that sometimes that's inconsistent in a repo so that's something like really basic and straightforward that can make sure that your code is really consistently um formatted um automatically rather than having to check it all yourself um or even if you use linters you don't have to run the linter every single time that you want to make sure that your code is getting up to that standard it's something that's done automatically um, as I said, it can also run tests. Um, you can build tests to kind of check um, that your code is um, producing uh, the outputs that you um, anticipate that it will. Um, and those tests can automatically run every single time um, that you um, um, integrate your code into the repo to make sure that nothing is breaking. Um, it can produce, uh, you can automatically set up um, uh, metadata stores. So, for example, if you're running a model, that can be really useful because it can um, store performance scores um, as well as many, many more things. Now, this talk is called an introduction to GitHub Actions, not an introduction to CICD. Um, so just to kind of break this down a little bit, GitHub Actions are CICD, but they're essentially GitHub flavored. Um, and what this means is that um, these kind of automatic um, things that you can set up, these automatic workflows that you can set up to format, to produce metadata, et cetera, can be triggered by something that happens on GitHub. So the, the kind of very process of using Git on GitHub, so if that's um, pushing some changes, if it's um, creating a pull request, so, so again, um, asking to merge uh, your changes from your branch into your main branch um, might require a pull request. So that might trigger something to happen. Um, uh, and there are kind of many, many more things on GitHub. Uh, you can even um, set up something like if someone comments on your repo, it can it can trigger something to happen. Um, so that's kind of what's referred to as um, GitHub Actions. Um, if you need further convincing that CICD um, workflows would be useful for you, um, perhaps it's um, useful to think about it in the context of um, something called RAP. Uh, and 
I'm pretty confident now that a lot of you will know what RAP is um, because it has appeared a lot um, in the NHSR community um, in um, a recent kind of uh, months and years. Um, but it, I'm not going to go into too much detail um, about what that is. Um, but in brief, it stands for reproducible analytical pipeline. So trying to make your analysis uh, reproducible um, so that anybody can um, reproduce um, uh, the results that you have. In NHS England, um, we have um, been putting a lot of effort into trying to help um, teams around the organization uh, and beyond um, implement or adapt what they're doing um, to, to make sure that they are uh, reproducible analytical pipelines. Um, and our approach is to use these kind of different levels to aspire towards. Um, so you can see things like at, at a baseline level of RAP, um, you're using an open source language such as Python or R, um, all the way through to gold RAP, um, which includes the ICD. Um, so um, uh, these kind of automatic testing um, that um, ensures, uh, sorry, automatic processes, including testing, ensuring some level of consistency in your code is something that um, uh, we aspire towards um, at NHS England, but would like to kind of um, suggest that others should as well. So if you're interested in that, um, there's a link on slides and Joe can share it. Um, uh, as well in the chat for you to learn a bit more about as well. Coming back to GitHub Actions. Um, so the GitHub flavor of CICD. Some useful um, uh, vocabulary that it might be um, good to start with um, uh, are laid out here for you. There's also a link in the title. Um, I'm not entirely sure whether you can click through these things on Zoom. Um, so again, uh, Joe, if you could share. Um, the link is just to the uh, documentation on GitHub, which is actually very high standard um, and would definitely recommend if you want to read um, up more about it. Um, to start with, we've got workflows. Um, so when I refer to a CI CD workflow, um, I essentially mean um, the process, the thing that you're trying to achieve, um, um, you're trying to uh, add um, to your repo um, to run automatically. Um, that workflow can run a bunch of things, um, but it is triggered off of the same thing, um, which is referred to as an event. So as I said before, um, if you want something to run um, after you've uh, pushed to a branch, um, that push is referred to as the event. So that event is then the trigger for your workflow, which is the thing that happens um, after that event happens. Um, the things in the workflow, so the distinct um, things that you want your workflow to do um, are set out um, in distinct jobs. Um, these jobs are um, essentially run uh, through um, and they can contain kind of um, steps within them as well, but we'll go into that in more detail later. Um, and you will also hear of runner um, um, or runners. Uh, essentially, this is the um, server or machine uh, that runs um, these processes themselves. So, for example, if you're doing testing, um, it might, if you're writing your code in Python, it might use PyTest, but you're like, there needs to be a machine that runs that. That can um, uh, be your own machine if you've got runners set up, or which most people use uh, is um, a um, machine of any flavor um, that you can um, uh, decide on in your workflow that will run these processes for you. And then finally, action. So it's a little bit um, confusing because GitHub Actions um, is kind of refer to more generally as all CI CD on GitHub. But um, there's also something called um, the um, GitHub Actions Marketplace, which is essentially where people have written their own workflows and they thought that they will be useful for other people. Um, so they've published them to something called the GitHub Actions Marketplace. And then you can then use those predefined actions um, in your own um, 
in your own workflow. It's a little bit like if you're familiar with Python, it's a bit like importing a package in Python, or if you're familiar with R, it's a very similar thing. Rather than having to write everything from scratch, you can just reference an action um, that's on the marketplace um, and use it very much um, in the same way without having to write everything out from scratch. Uh, GitHub themselves have um, published a lot of um, pre-defined uh, actions, which are um, extremely useful and perform like very basic tasks, which um, Joe will go on to show you um, in a little bit as well. Um, and this is a little bit of um, an example of the kinds of actions that you might find on that marketplace. Um, so there are over 20,000. Uh, I wouldn't recommend just browsing because there's so many um, and it can be quite difficult to understand what each one is doing just from looking through like that. But if you um, are um, convinced that you're trying to do something that is probably something that millions of other people have tried to do, you can search quite easily for, for that um, and you might find something that are of interest. Um, they're really easy to use in your workflow. Again, um, Joe will show you that in a second. Um, but some examples, um, uh, the, the one that everybody uses um, is Checkout, which again, Joe will, Joe will show you um, later, which um, allows you to clone a repository to your workflow. So your workflow can access um, the code from within um, your own repository or another repository as well, as well as many more. I've listed a couple here as well. Your workflow is contained um, in something called a YAML file. So um, when you start out um, and you think, okay, I want to do CICD, what do I do? You need to create a file um, called a YAML file, which actually stands for yet another markup language. Uh, so um, uh, it's, it, it's not necessarily anything specific. It, it's a kind of format, a useful format for um, kind of setting um, parameters and instructions for for um, uh, automatic processes, as well as lots of other things. Um, rather than helpfully, it's referred to as YAML, um, but the extension is without the A. Um, uh, it, it actually, there's a whole other thing about um, uh, extensions with an A in as well, but I won't go into that. Um, essentially, your workflow file, you can call it whatever you like. Um, um, MyWorkflow.yml, although I wouldn't recommend that because uh, it's not very informative, um, but it will look something like this. Um, and after a short break, um, I will go through this with you um, and you'll be able to make this yourself. Um, but essentially, as a as a first look, we can see that you've named the workflow as say hello world. Um, and you might be thinking, what does this workflow do? Well, it says hello world, which is why it's called um, uh, say hello world. The next section here is the event trigger. So it's saying, when do I want this workflow to run? What do I want? this workflow to be triggered on. Um, and uh, here you can see, well, you might not see if you're unfamiliar with um, GitHub Actions, um, it says something called workflow dispatch, um, which actually just means um, that this is a manual trigger. So um, you'll see this when we make it and then it runs. Um, this will eventually just uh, look like a workflow that you can press um, run and it will run. It won't necessarily be triggered off anything specific. Um, so this is useful for kind of ad hoc events that you might want to use um, or testing workflows um, where you can kind of control when they are being triggered. We then have a list of jobs. Um, this um, workflow itself just has one job. So the job itself is named Hello World. Um, uh, but you could have several other jobs underneath it if you wanted to have multiple jobs. Um, here is where you specify your runner. We've got runs on and then Ubuntu latest. This is a, um, a flavor of Linux. Um, it's, it's, it's not really important at this point because we're not doing anything that requires any particular operating system. Um, this is just a very lightweight machine that it's very, very useful um, to use. Um, 
And underneath, we have our steps that we want to run. In this case, again, one job and one step. Um, and this step being called print hello world and all that it's doing. So this is where you have the um, actual meat of what's happening in the job, in the step even. Um, and you can see it saying echo, hello world. And um, that is a um, it, it is essentially a shell command that is saying print hello world to the terminal. Um, for those of you unfamiliar with um, the terminal, um, I won't go into it in too much detail, but we will create this workflow and you'll be able to see where this is being printed out, which we'll explain a little bit more about that. So I think now we have time for any questions. Um, and after the questions, I think we're gonna take a um, quick break. But first, any questions? Uh, we've got a question in the chat. Um, so the difference between a manual and automatic trigger. Yes. OK, um, well, is this a question of what is the difference, I'm guessing? Um, let's go with that, yes. Yes, OK, yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll go into what is the difference as well as why. Um, essentially, and this will become more clear as we go through the workshop, um, but essentially some things you might want to automatically run um, and actually kind of as your repository becomes um, slightly more mature uh, and there's more in it, um, you might have a series of steps that you want to run um, every time you um, create a pull request. So to put this into kind of um, context, you might be working on a, a, a piece of code, um, say you're creating some um, features from a data set that um, uh, are kind of incorporated into a model, say, um, and you've been working it for ages, you're finally ready for it to be introduced into the like, um, main part of the project, um, you commit all your changes, you push them, um, and you create a pull request so that the other members of your team can check your code um, before it gets integrated into the main branch. Um, that pull request, once you've created it, you mm. might want to say, okay, well, um, every time I create a pull request, can you can you please just automatically run um, linters so that I can check that there isn't anything that um, I've committed that is like, I don't know, um, incorrectly formatted or I've got some kind of like very basic kind of, I don't, the classic one is like I've missed an end bracket or something like that. Um, so that before people um, come to review a pull request, you can just make those changes quickly so that they're not endlessly commenting on things that are kind of like, um, very obvious uh, and kind of easy catches. Um, that's an example of a kind of ma uh, automatic trigger that you can set up. You can set up so that like a pull request is the trigger to run that linter. However, if you're getting started with workflows um, and you're creating a workflow that does that linter for you, before putting the trigger as pull request, you might wanna just check it works. So you might wanna at first just make the trigger uh, manual, so set that workflow dispatch um, argument, um, uh, uh, sorry, set the on argument as workflow dispatch so that then you can go to your repo and kind of test it and manually click run, which I'll show you um, in the next um, bit so that you can see what it is that it's doing. And then you can change it and you can make it triggered from an event um, so that it can run automatically. Um, I'd say, yeah, the, 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 the kind of manual tasks are often the ones that you want to test or they might be ones that um you don't want to do bef like before you've had a chance to like review something um so something where there needs to be a bit of like manual intervention first some of those um tasks might be good to set up as manual as well so hopefully that helps also work workflow dispatches um that can be also triggered by a, a api call so if it's something that you want uh, to trigger it that's outside of github so all the, the automatic triggers are uh, within GitHub pretty much. So if you want something outside of GitHub, let's say um, you you want it um, uh, 
you know, you have a system where you want a Slack message to trigger something. Um, you could do some fancy system that would 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 hook that up. Um, but yeah, uh, we also have a question. Um, I think quickly, if you set up a linter and GitHub Actions, um, do the formatting changes ever affect the running of the code? Um, it depends how you set it up. Um, uh, if you want to run your code um, as part of a GitHub Action, um, then you can do that. But I would recommend um, separating the jobs so that um, one fails. You can, you can decide whether or not one failing will allow the other to uh, will stop the other from running. Um, but also most linters um, uh, are distinct from formatters in that they don't actually like alter your code. They'll just show you where the changes need to be made. Um, but you could, if you wanted to, you could um, implement an automatic format and which might just do some of the formatting yourself. Um, and again, if that, if that was the case, if it's actually changing your code, um, you would then want to then um, make sure that that was also included in the run of the code. So you might want to separate those jobs out um, as well. Um, hopefully that helps. I, I think we're gonna, we need to go onto the break. Um, so if everyone can take a, a couple of minutes break and, and come back at 10 past, that would be great. I will see you guys then. If, um, when you return, if you can drop um, an emoji in the chat, just to say that you're back, that would be fantastic. Thanks guys, see you later. Okay, just bear with me. I'm gonna have to change my audio settings. So it should take uh, two minutes, uh, half a minute. Right. Can everybody hear me okay? Okay, fantastic. Sorry about that. Um, we will um, continue now. So um, hope you are all um, uh, following along okay. And as I said, if some of the things feel still slightly abstract, hopefully uh, they will become more clear as we um, go on with this workshop. Okay, so exercise one, we're going to implement our first um, GitHub action. So our first CICD workflow, um, which is going to do what I introduced to you um, before the break. So it's going to um, print hello world and it's going to be manually triggered. Um, I should also say that this is my first time doing this live. Um, so um, if anybody spots any errors, um, uh, you will win an imaginary prize. Um, and that goes for you too as well, Joe, um, uh, to uh, uh, stop me from uh, misinforming people. Right. So, okay. All of your workflows um, are stored in this directory here. Um, it's currently empty, um, so you can see that there is there are no workflow set up on the repo. You can also see them um, by going to the Actions tab of your Forks repo. And as you can see here, um, 
it's asking me to get started with GitHub Actions because I have no workflows. If I had a workflow, this page will look very different, which we will see um, at the end of this exercise. Um, there are lots of suggestions, this repo. Um, you can see that it's picked up that um, we might be using Python code. Um, so it's suggesting um, that I use some of these pre-formatted um, actions. Um, these are all coming from um, the marketplace. And you can see here that these are all published by GitHub Actions themselves, um, but some of them are um, by Microsoft Azure, Amazon Web Services, et cetera. Um, so if you, this is another kind of place where you can search for something that you might um, want to do, as well as kind of have a look at the kinds of things that you might want to do. Um, but I'm going to set up a workflow myself because um, I want to demonstrate to you um, how you can do this. Uh, I'm going to do this um, from the GitHub UI. Um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this always, um, but for our first workflow, this is what we're going to do um, because it's very simple. Um, the following exercises are going to be um, uh, done through something called GitHub Code Spaces, um, but Joe is going to take you through that and um, everything that you need to know about that at a later stage. But for now, this is something that we can do um, from this page here, from the GitHub browser um, itself, um, and that's what I'm going to do. Um, so kind of um, try and introduce to you what's going on here um, on this screen. Um, you can see that uh, this file here um, is um, uh, has been kind of automatically created for me um, and it's called it's called itself main.yml. So that's your YAML file. I'm going to rename it. Um, because I'm going to make quite a few workflows on this repo. So I want to be able to distinguish kind of what, um, what it is that I am um, uh, trying to do. So I'm going to call it hello world. Um, and I'm also, um, well, okay. So I'm actually doing this in the develop branch, um, which isn't um, really recommended because any work that I should do, I should create my own branch. Um, and work on that. Um, however, as you can see from, um, uh, from as you will see from a later stage, um, when I commit the changes, I'm going to click this button here uh, and I'm gonna ask that I create a new branch when I make those changes. Um, so for now, um, I can work on the screen here uh, and know that I'll commit the, branch, uh, the changes that I'm making and I'll make them to a new branch um, that will be separate from the develop branch itself. Uh, and if you want to know more about like why you'd create a separate branch, um, definitely recommend looking at the um, uh, Git resources from the workshop that Joe um, previously did as part of the NHSR community. Um, but for now, I'm not gonna go too much into um, detail about that. So first things first, um, I am going to set the name of this workflow. Um, I am going to name it, say hello world. Um, it's a good idea to give it a name that um, describes what it is that your workflow is going to do um, um, so that you can recognize it as a at a later date. Um, you can see here that it's already giving me um, tips on what it is that I need to do. So for example, it's saying that I'm missing on. So I'm missing what this is triggered on, um, which is going to be my next step. Uh, before doing that, I'm just going to change my indent size to four. Um, this is not particularly important at this point in time, um, but I know that Joe um, is going to be making workflows with that indent. So I just want to make sure that it's consistent, um, but don't worry too much about that. Um, okay, so as it has prompted me, um, I need an on. Um, so um, I'm just going to tabulate here, um, hit tab here, uh, and I'm going to use my manual trigger here, um, which is workflow dispatch. Remember the colon at the end here as well. 
Um, so that is, again, just to remind you, that is saying this is going to be triggered when I click a button um, rather than uh, triggered automatically following an event. And again, I will show you what that looks like um, after we create um, our workflow. Um, so I'm going to go back um, to, um, I'm going to un untabulate um, and I'm going to define our jobs. Um, so again, tabulate in. Um, our first and only job is going to be called Hello World. Um, and I, again, need to tabulate in again. And in this job, I need to specify a runner. Um, so again, um, just I'm repeating what I went through um, before the break. I'm going to choose um, the latest version of the Ubuntu, Ubuntu flavor of Linux. Um, again, I'm not going to explain um, the kind of different OSs that you can use, but this is a really good one um, for uh, kind of these kind of tasks. Tasks, it's very light, it's very quick. Um, and um, all of this is still just kind of setting up um, the workflow. Uh, I need to actually define what it's going to do. So this is where my steps um, come in. Um, again, I need to tabulate in. Uh, these steps need to be defined with a dash. Um, so this is um, just a normal hyphen and a space. Um, and first I give a name of my individual step. Again, this is just going to be hello world. Uh, and this is not normally this repetitive, but this uh, particular workflow only has um, one job and one step. Um, so this is why they all have the same name, but uh, you'll see later um, when the jobs become a bit more complicated, um, why it's useful to have these different names. Um, and what is the, my step actually going to do? Um, so I'm going to make sure that um, my next line is lined up with um, where name starts there. So that's two spaces in. Um, and this is the, the, the kind of content of um, what the step is going to do for this job in this workflow. Um, and this is where I have this um, um, shell command, echo hello world. So echo is just a command that means print out um, um, and then hello world is going to be printed out. And again, printed out where I hear you say, um, when I show you um, what this looks like when it's run. So when you get a chance to actually um, manually trigger this workflow, you'll see where it gets printed. Um, and that is essentially it. Um, so I've created this, uh, but obviously I haven't um, uh, committed the changes. So I haven't uh, registered the changes with the repository. So I need to do that. Um, I need to um, click this button here. Um, I'm going to leave that commit message as it is, because that is what I've done. I've created Hello World um, YAML. Um, I'm not going to put it to my Gmail. I'm going to put it to my uh, uh, NHS address, um, but um, feel free to leave that um, for whatever you like. Um, and as I said earlier, I don't want to work directly on the develop branch. So I'm going to create a new branch um, for what I've done. Um, and I'm just going to name this um, Hello World Action. Um, so what that's going to do um, is it's going to um, commit uh, those changes to that branch. Um, and it's going to um, suggest that I create a pull request for this, which I'm going to do um, because I want to see um, what these changes look like. Um, and this is where we just need to be a little bit careful um, because when we're creating a pull request, we want to make sure that we're um, creating a pull request to our own branch rather than the original like branch in um, Joe's NHSR community workspace. Um, I think this is correct. I think this isn't gonna set it up to you, um, but that, just to be correct. sure, I think I'm going to um, manually create it by going to this pull request tab um, and um, 
creating a call request just from this. Ah, okay, yes. So uh, I think the prompt that comes up um, that will ask you to create a pull request, um, it's not clear which um, base repository you're using. So I would suggest going to this tab here. Um, I'll just do that again. So you go to this tab here, um, you either do new pull request or compare and pull request. Um, and you want to change this so that it's not um, pointing at the NHSR community version, it's pointing at your own um, forked version of the repo. Um, and um, I think that's probably what it automatically set up for me earlier, but I just wanted to make sure. Um, and that is indeed the branch that I want to um, merge in. So that's good. Um, and this is um, me asking, please um, uh, merge in my changes um, to the develop branch to create my pull requests. Uh, and, and, and as you will know, this is normally the process where you get somebody to review a pull request and they'll comment on why you haven't done something that you should have done. Um, but for the purposes of this, I'm the only one working on this. So I'm going to um, merge that pull request in. I'm going to delete my branch because I don't need I don't need that anymore. Um, okay, so I have promised to show you what that will look like. Um, so if you go to the third tab up here, the actions tab um, of, of your forked version of that repo, you'll now see, so where we had before that big screen that said get started with GitHub Actions, we now have a completely different view. Um, which is showing me that there have, haven't been uh, any workflow runs, but you can also see on the left-hand side, very excitingly, our named GitHub um, action. So um, that's where our name comes up here. Say hello world, exclamation mark. Um, and if I click on it, you can see um, that this says, this workflow has a workflow dispatch event trigger. And this is where you can press that shiny button. Um, so I can click on this button here, and I'm going to use the workflow from my develop branch and I'm going to run it. Um, and it says here that it was successfully requested. Um, and it is uh, saying here now that it's in the queue and this um, orange circle here is saying that it's not yet complete. Um, oh, and it's now changed to blue. Uh, and you can see that it took 16 seconds to run. Um, and if I click into it, I can show you um, what happened. So you can see here that um, it was a success. Um, and if I click this button here, you can see you can see this is my workflow file. Um, and if I wanted to, I could click through there and, and see the file itself. Uh, and here, if I click into this, you can see what actually happened. So you can see that the job was set up. Um, that's a lot of things that happen in the background um, to, to, to make the workflow uh, work. And if I click into here, um, you can see that it's run my um, step of my job that was run echo hello world. And lo and behold, it's printed hello world. So that is the output of echo hello world. And that is printed to here um, successfully. Uh, and that is hopefully um, what you're seeing on your own screens, uh, a successful um, GitHub action uh, that you've just run um, and it has printed uh, out uh, Hello World to your screen. Okay, so um, we're going to have a quick break um, and before that we can answer a couple of questions. Um, I should just say before the questions, um, you might very well be thinking, why on earth would I want to print hello world um, and have it triggered by pressing a button? Um, you'd be very uh, uh, understandably uh, uh, questioning why. Um, this is an example uh, and it's it's going to be we're going to build iteratively from this point. So we now know how to set up a workflow. We're now familiar with what the YAML file looks like. We're then going to add on pieces until you are getting to a point where you're running something that would be useful to have in your repository. Um, so we're, we've got something here that 
runs from a button that prints um, and, and we're going to kind of build on that to to create workflows that run automatically that run testing etc 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 um so stay with us and you can kind of expand on what you've just been able to do okay are there any questions Yes, um, I have a question. I um, ran my code Ivan, and is that a I got a from you. I don't think I yes, can hear you. So, yes, 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 is uh, Ivan. I put my uh, question in the chat as well, and uh, yeah, I got a uh, failure. It says I've got a, an error. Is that just in me my YAML here, Ivan? Can anybody else hear me? Hello. Yeah, I can. I can hear you. Okay. So yeah, there was an error. Uh, flagged up on line four, and uh, I can't see a problem so, with the can code. You hear Ivan? I think, Harry, I think your sound isn't up. Okay. Yes. I can't hear anyone. So, uh, Joe, if you could answer Ivan's question, I, I might have to uh, fix my audio. Um, okay, yeah. So, yeah, um, I think it's, it's been answered a bit in the, in the chat, um, Ivan. Um, uh, but, yeah, so it looks like you've misspelled dispatch on. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, so just a small typo, um, but okay. just looking for your code. It looks otherwise um, healthy. Okay, thank you. Just try again while you're on the break. Thank you. Um, how's your hearing, Harriet? Yeah, apologies. I heard I heard Ivan say thank you. Um, uh, I was going to suggest that you could lip read now that I've turned my uh, camera on, but that would. Be quite a challenge. <laughs> um, yeah, it turns out I just needed to click on audio settings, and for some reason, just clicking on the settings seemed to fix everything. Um, I didn't actually change anything, but there you go. Um, okay, so we're at half past. Um, I'm suggesting that we have a five minute break. I'll put up my screen share again. Um, and then after the break, we've got an introduction to GitHub Code Spaces. Um, and a little bit of an introduction to PyTest, and then we'll be getting you to build your own testing workflow as well. Okay, let's get started again. So, we're now just gonna do a quick introduction to code spaces. So, so far we have been, um, uh, we have been coding in, um, uh, coding just in GitHub. Um, however, for the next sort of exercises, we're going to switch over code spaces, which is a nice platform also provided by GitHub, uh, which allows, allows us to quickly spin up a virtual machine um, and uh, just allows me to show you um, uh, the code in a bit more detail. If you have any problems with code spaces, do flag it up in the chat and see if we can fix it. Uh, but you can continue the rest of the, uh, the workshop just working on GitHub, it's just a bit more of a clunky and more difficult way, um, but you'd be able to, you should be able to do it, um, like we've done with the, the Hello World example. Um, so let me bring up um, my screen. Okay, uh, so this is my faults repository. Um, I'm not sure I haven't protected my branches yet, but I think I'll leave that for now and get on with things. Um, and so looking at the homepage on my repository, uh, it's quite easy to go and set up a code space. I simply just go to code. And then here you got the local screen. And this is if you want to code down to your local computer, um, uh, which can be quite good to do. You can also do this. Um, however, we're going to keep it nice and simple um, and uh, click code spaces. Um, so you see here this, this option. And we've got a number, number of different options here. But we've got this big, nice green button to click create code space and develop. Um, 
We can also go to this, this plus buzz button as well. This is also a bad option to use. Um, so we are going to uh, create uh, code space on develop and it's going to set it up. So we can see at the top here, um, this tab is called potential, um, potential Enigma, um, which is the name. And we just see here, it's just building up the code space. So it just take a second to build. Um, just a point is, um, if you are working in Firefox, you may have issues. I've been having issues with Firefox where it hasn't been loading correctly. Um, so I just switched over to Edge for this. Um, yeah, I'm just going to give it a minute. I think it is important to add that CodeSpaces is um, a sort of uh, paid for service, but they do provide a decent sort of free trial every month. So there's, there's, you've got quite a lot of capacity, um, but just be aware of uh, that if you really, really use it hard, you know, if you start like processing gigabytes of data, um, that they may charge you for it. Um, however, uh, we can see here it is all uh all waking up and setting up okay this um and we can see it's opened up uh the repository so uh so i'm going to quickly just turn my teams on to do not disturb okay so if you have used VS Code before, this will look very, very, very familiar for you. Because um, it is VS Code, um, but just in the server. Um, if you're not familiar with VS Code, uh, I'll just give you a quick tour. So um, here we've got a less editor space. So this is where we can work with our files and we can sort of edit, edit things and create files. Uh, over to the side here, we've got um, the, the sidebar uh, with our Explorer. Um, we've got a nice search thing. We've got some source control where we can uh, work with Git. And we've got a number of other things down here, like extensions and stuff like that, that I've got set up. Um, we have then, because we're in the Explorer, we can see here all our, our files and, and folders that we've got. Uh, so we can give it a little explore and we can open up the different files here. So I can open up the main um, Python file. Um, and also I can um, open up my little uh, testing file and also I can have a look at any existing workflows I've got. Uh, I, I didn't do the first exercise, but you should have here your hello world example. Uh, we can see down here um, that we are editing on a code space um, and we're currently working in the, uh, the develop branch. Um, so we can we can use that to we can click here and we can actually change our branch and, and create a new branch um, and of course down here we've got a terminal so we can um, run bash commands and and move around um, and, and and run run commands so that'd be very useful right um, so hopefully you'll be able to you, you've got this view and you can you can see your code space um, if you have any problems do put a, a mention in the chat. Um, and we can see if we can um, fix it. Um, and if you're really, really stuck, then yeah, just, just switch back to the, to the main GitHub repository and work in there. Yes, yeah, so uh, we, yeah, we will not see the main GitHub quota and we will show you how to shut it down properly. And they also, if you don't use it for a while, GitHub will automatically shut it down for you um, and send you an email saying that we're about to delete this code space for you. Um, so they're quite good at you know preventing you from um, uh, being charged. Um, and, and actually throughout the workshop, you might come back to the screen and it would have stopped running um, and ask you to restart it. So it's very, it, they're quite good at you know preventing you from using unnecessarily. Um, okay, um, so um, let's go back to the presentation. 
Okay, so that's a quick introduction to co uh, spaces. Now we're going to quickly talk about PyTest, because our next example, we're going to use PyTest um, to, to um, uh, and, and use a GitHub action to automatically run our tests. So what is PyTest? So um, if you're a Python programmer, um, uh, then you might be already familiar with PyTest. Um, other, other programming languages and other uh, testing frameworks are available. Um, but yeah, so PyTest is a nice little framework that allows you to write small readable tests. It's got very, very simple syntax um, that can used to be write uh, simple to complex text. And it has some really good like, inbuilt methods um, that allow you to sort of set up some stuff. Um, it's really easy to install, so you can just do pip install PyTest, and then we can just run um, PyTest in the, in the command line. Uh, and we see here example of a output um, that, that you can have. Um, so you can see here, you can get through like 44 tests very, very quickly, and you can quickly see where, where things are going, uh, going on. Um, if we switch back to our code space, we can actually um, go and have a run of these. Um, so we've got this test main file. Um, we don't need to have it open, so actually I'm going to close it. Um, and just in the, in the command line here, let's see if it works, just run PyTests. There we go. Okay, so it has very quickly run. I'm just going to expand up my, um, my terminal here, and it's gone back up to the top where we started. Um, so just give you a tour. Um, so it's given this nice long output here. Um, and it has tell, told us that it has found tests in test main, and we've got four little dots here. That means they've passed, and then it's got four Fs, which have saying it's fail. Um, okay. Um, and uh, because when we when you've got tests, um, we are more interested in the failures. PyTest only displays those. It actually goes in and, and shows us what's happened there. Um, so. Uh, if you have an explore through the code, um, we've got two functions here called uh, example add, which is a very nice little function that adds two numbers together. Um, and we also got example bad add, which is not as good at that. Um, and we've got some nice tests to run those. Um, again, we don't need to go into what the, these tests are doing, uh, but feel free, yeah, we can, um, uh, it's good to explore in your own time. Um, you just need to know that they're, they're here and um, we've got these tests that are failing. So when we, we've got this bad function that is, is failing its tests. Now let's say if that I've um, developed these as part of my feature branch and I've developed this bad function, um, we want to set up a, um, a action that automatically check for us that if you know we've done this, I could run this myself, but I could be very forgetful and very lazy and not want to run PyTest loads and loads of times as I develop this thing. So um, to limit this repetitive thing, we're going to get uh, GitHub Actions to automatically run us for us. Uh, so just have a look. Uh, um, just looking at the chat, uh, Martin, is this on the um, GitHub action? Uh, sorry, is this in Py, running PyTest, or is this in a previous step? Uh, yeah, it's in the terminal bash when I write run PyTest. Uh, are you just writing PyTest or are you doing run PyTest? Run PyTest. Uh, you just need to do PyTest. Oh, sorry about that. Sorry, sorry. Okay, um, I'm just going to run something called the clear command and just clears on the terminal. Okay, that's quite very very brief introduction to PyTest and how how it's going to look. Um, so we want to create an action. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on this. Um, uh, actually, no, we're going to do, do this properly through the terminal. Uh, we're going to go get checkout. Um, dash b, and then we're going to create a new branch. So this this is a command in get to to create a new branch, um, and we're going to call this. Um, I've got my initials at the front here, and then um, run test. Action. 
And we switch over to the new branch and we can see it down here. Uh, we're then going to go into our GitHub workflows folder here, and we're going to create a new file, and we're going to call it run. Uh, check something, sorry. Rename that. Run podcast. And we're going to give it the extension YAML. Okay. So we're going to add in some uh, values. So we're going to add in the name of it. I'm going to call it run test. And we're going to um, add its trigger now. So actually, if you look here, it's noticed that it is a GitHub action. Your VPN might be um, slowing it down. Um, just respond to the message in chat. Um, again, if you if you go uh, into your repository, um, you can you can go and create this. Um, you can you can do like we did before um, in in the hello hello world, and uh, create create the the file in here. So on um, and we're going to give it a trigger. Uh, we're going to use the same uh, trigger as before, workflow dispatch. Um, this is just so we can start prototyping it out. And we're also going to add another one as well. So we're going to add in pull requests. And we're going to give it some types. So we're going to get specific here on what type of pull request events that we're going to have this triggered on. And we're going to give it uh, several different types here. So we're going to give it, first of all, uh, we're going to give it a leave that has to be, I don't know, it's a full space, sorry. So we're going to do opens. So yeah, um, so I'm, I'm using four spaces here um, for each sort of tab. As uh, so you can see down here, if you want to check that, you can check your select indentation, um, click indent using spaces, and then four. So spaces, indent using spaces, and then four. Okay, um, so, uh, yeah, we're specifying this list of different action types. So we've got opens, we've got reopens, we've got sync, nice, and we've got ready. You don't need to add in these types. Um, I I just added them in this example because it, it, they are just. Um, uh, they're just nice neat, neat examples and they will just mean we don't get interference later. Um, you can have different types of pull requests like draft pull requests. Um, so you might not want to run your test automatically on those because you might be drafting and still working on your code and you know it's going to fail. Okay, so now we're going to specify jobs and we're going to give it the name PyTest. Uh, we're going to specify what uh, runner it's going to run on. And again, as usual, we're going to use a uh, Ubuntu latest. And we're going to specify some steps. So um, our first step, we give it the name check out the, the repo. So we're going to simply say, check it, check out this repository. And we're going to use the pre-existing um, checkout action. So we're going to use users. 
actions forward slash slash checkouts at v3. So um, if we control and right click or we, we hover over it, it's going to open this action in GitHub. You can open it up and it will take us to the repository for this action. And we can have a look through quickly. And it, it's got all this information about the usage and the default things. Uh, we won't go through this now, but uh, do have a read through in your own time. There's some interesting settings in here. Um, I've read it through, through it before um, and actually learned some, some interesting things about GitHub Actions. Um, but we're just going to use it as is for now. Um, and it, what it's going to do is again, it's going to clone down our repository. Okay. We're going to add a new step after this. I'm going to name it set up Python. And it's going to use another pre built action. And this one's going to be actions set up Python. And again, we use the app v3. I mean, this just specifies what version of the action we use. Um, uh, it, it, it sort of, yeah, um, you know, as, as they iterate through and, and release new version, they will probably upgrade it um, and add new features. Um, so, but we're just going to use at v3 because this is what I've uh, done it with before. Um, we're now going to specify some input to this action. So, this action needs some inputs. And if we control and click on it, uh, we can have a look for again. It's got this documentation. Um, and it's going to ask for some, some different stuff. So it could ask for uh, the Python version, uh, could use the architecture. Um, we're just going to specify the Python version. So we're going to add a new line. Let's tap in a little bit. And then Python version. I'm going to simply specify 3.x. So this means use Python 3 and then the latest version of Python. Um, if your uh, repository uh, use a particular version of, of Python, um, then you might want to be more specific with this. Um, however, I'm going to just leave it as 3.x. Um, there are similar uh, actions for R. Um, uh, yeah, um, and and uh, and R and, and another program languages. Um, so it is is worth is worth knowing sort of um, why we need to actually set up Python. Where before we we just simply ran Pytest in here, and we didn't have to run any of these uh, previous things before. Uh, the reason is um, if you have a look in this uh, uh, dev container, I I did some preparation and stuff and basically told it to set up Python, um, use, use this image for the code space, um, which, is, which is Python. So this means the code space will automatically comes to Python and ultimately has uh, our, our requirements installed. Um, because this would be spinning up a new machine, a new lot of box, um, uh, nothing is set up yet. So we have to check out the repo ourselves. We, well, we have to check out the repo, we have to tell it to set up Python. Um, and now we need to tell it to install the requirements. Um, so for our next step, we're going to go name and install dependencies. These names are completely optional, by the way. I could, I could not have any names here. It's basically just making sure it's well documented, nice and clear for someone to come in and, and read the code and understand what I'm doing in each step. Okay. So I'm now going to use the run command. That's the same command that we used for the hello world. However, here I'm going to add in a little pipe. So I'm going to add in this, this, this symbol here. What this allows us to do is it allows us to actually have now multiple lines of code um, that we run of, of, of um, shell script. Um, and we're going to add in Python. And this is just the same as if we run it in the terminal here. So Python dash m pip install upgrade 
So it's just making sure pip is installed and is, is a nice uh, a, a nice level. Um, I'm going to add in, and I'm going to run pip install requirements.txt. If you run um, Python um, uh, before, you'll be familiar with this command. Um, but this just installs, go, it picks up oh, sorry, this, this file here and just installs all these packages. Yeah, so just, um, yeah, Harris put in chats and make sure you get these double things. So these are being installed when um, uh, when this is set up. Um, so so when, when you run this action, it will set up this little Ubuntu um, machine, um, this runner on a GitHub server, um, and it will and it will just simply run through these commands and set these up. So it won't be installed on your local machine. Um, uh, it, it will be in, installed on this sort of remote box. Um, similar like this, this is a remote machine that we're currently working at the moment, um, uh, which is which is good. So we can just install what we want and then discard it and, it's, and it gets cleared up. Okay, so finally, we're going to add in um, a last step, which is going to be test high test and then we're going to run and we just do a one line command here i'm going to do pytest we could have included this as an extra line in here and just gone pytest however um it is good to um separate out your commands into nice discrete steps um, so it's really nice and clear for someone going and reading through this in the future, going like, okay, this bit is installed in the dependencies, this bit is running the PyTest, and it will show up a bit cleaner in our in our code. I'm sorry, in our, in our Okay, so this is all done. So what we're going to do is we're going to quickly uh, commit it. So I'm going to run the git status. And that's going to tell us we've got untracked files. I'm going to git add... So I'm just going to put it in. Uh, you can do git adds dot as well if you want. And I'm going to do git commit and add a message um, and new pytest command. Okay, new pytest action. Git, sorry, uh, git commit dash m. So, and then give it the git commit message, add new pytest action. There we go. So the, yes, I can paste it in the chat. Give me a second, I will. I think that actually no, that's, that's gone wrong. Okay, I'll just paste it as is. So that is the code. Now I'll just delete the bad one. There we go. Okay, um, so we've committed it. Now we just need to push it up. Um, so we're going to get um, git push. Uh, Dash I believe the command is origin okay so the command is just get push dash u put origin and then the name of your branch right um, if we go back to my repository and we can see that uh, so the dash u is a shortcut for set upstream, um, if you're unfamiliar with it. Um, and, and that means it just sets, it says, okay, 
push this up to repository. And if you don't find a, um, a, a matching branch up in the repository, um, just set that as your sort of the remote version. Um, yeah. Um, okay, so we've got a, a pull request. I'm just gonna go into here and uh, create a new pull request. Um, just to be very, very by the book by it. Um, so, uh, so again, I did, sorry, went very quickly. So pull requests, I, got, I can click this button up here, um, but I'm going to show you the, the full way. Um, click new pull request. Oh. Um. It, I, I have checked and that is the right default, by the way. So you should be fine just to create it from there. Okay. Okay, so I got, uh, sorry, I, I changed that from um, base repository and made sure it is um, my my fork of it and not the base NHSR community. And I'm gonna change this to JW run um, by test action. And we're gonna create the pull request. I'm gonna, just go ahead and create it. And I'm gonna go ahead and just wait for the checks to complete. So um, we can see that uh, GitHub has noticed that on this branch, if we look at files change, there is this, this action in there. Um, and it has gone ahead and run that action for us. And we can see here, it has failed. There's some ways we can, we can view this. So we can look here and we can click on details. It'll take us through and it'll take us directly um, Okay, um, uh, and we can say it's taken directly to, to this where it's run it. So it's done all these different uh, steps of the job. So set up, then it's checked out the repository, set up Python, install dependency, and then test with PyTest, it's run PyTest, and it's put out these failure messages. Um, I've noticed, yeah, uh, missed some of the codes. Uh, is this uh, assume you're you need to commit it to the repository? Um, so you get ads put this in the chat um, and get commits um, So those are the commands in it just put in chat um, if you haven't been able to commit it and push it up. Okay, um, so back to this. So yeah, we can quickly see our, our thing has failed. It's got a nice red X and we can go through and have a look at our issues. And it's just the same as our output in code spaces. Um, so probably just, see it's the same. We're gonna go back. We can also look through the checks thing here and you can see here if you've got multiple checks it'll go through and it'll bring it bring it down so there's loads, loads of ways we can go and view this stuff and we can also go through actions you can see here this has failed we can click through here so this job has failed and this step has failed um even though it's failed it's still cleaned up things so it's done post job to clean up which is nice. So we know it's nice and clean and it's all done. Okay, let's go and fix this stuff. Um, so we're gonna go back into our code space and we're going to, instead we're just gonna go to our test main um, pi. Um, and what we can do is we can, um, well, we could actually just ignore our tests, which would be bad and we can just say, it's a work in progress. We're not going to test it yet. Uh, however, it's a bit better to um, 
quickly just do add, add this little thing in here, which is um, we'll we'll skip it for us. I'm gonna say uh, work in progress. Um, not text yet. So then what this is gonna do is it's gonna go and come through and it's gonna go okay um, for all these tests in here. So this this just creates multiple tests with different settings. Um, it's going to say, skip them all, they all will fail. Um, and that's great if we are just wanting to get um, something going. Joe, can I ask a quick question? Yep. Um, are you saving your file as you go, or is that something that Codespaces is doing automatically? Uh, I think I've got autosave on, um, but if you've got a little dot here, Actually, let's turn off auto save. Um, you'll see here there's a little dot up here, and you can just save it. And I'm just going to leave that again. And you can see it's popped up here as an uh, as a change. I used source control by default, um, but I shouldn't do that. It's a bit naughty for me. Um, I'm going to keep auto save off for now. Um, okay, let's add this change. And just double check it is ready to be committed. And git commit dash m. Um, um, tests. And then finally, we do get push. We don't have to do the dash u origin stuff um, because it's already got a upstream branch that it's tracking. I'm going to push it. Okay. Uh, so we're going to get some pull requests. And you can see here, it's now when I've got another commit, it's going to run it again. It's in progress. There we go. And it has passed. And go in here, we can check it out. You can see it's all happy as Larry. Um, let's go into actions. And we can see here in our, on our workflow logs, um, yeah, I'll chuck it in the chat in a second. Um, but yeah, you can see here, we've got a previous failing test and we've got a happy test. Yeah, and if we look in here quickly, we can do the test with PyTest and we have a look. We can see those actions were all skipped. Um, yeah, sorry if I've gone a bit fast and you missed um, how we, we are fixing this. We're just adding this line here, PyTest mark skip um, in, into our test main file. Well, while that's up on the screen, I wonder whether it's helpful to kind of put this into context. Um, so some of you might be thinking, um, what if the test fails? What, what, like, why are we, why are we trying to get it to skip the test rather than fixing the test? Um, so I think maybe it's worth saying, okay, well, why would you want to run an automatic test for progress in the first place? Just revisiting that. Um, say you've got some Python code, um, it already has some tests um, that you've written yourself and you've created tests that say um, using this function should um, return this output and if it doesn't then error. Uh, and you've made a change to a function um, rather than creating another test um, it's sometimes helpful to um, see where the tests are failing so that you think, okay, well, actually I've changed this function. Yep. The test is failing. That test doesn't mean the function is broken. It means that I've actually redefined something and therefore I need to change my tests. Or it could be a flag to you that's like, oh, actually that change does something that I wasn't expecting to, to, to break. Um, therefore I need to go revisit that. Um, where you might want to skip it, so where you might want to think like, oh, um, 
I, I know this test isn't working. Um, I need to skip it is when um, you've got your workflow set up um, and you're merging maybe onto a branch that um, doesn't contain um, like live code doesn't contain like absolutely perfect code or production code maybe you're um uh you've got kind of two branches um uh one of them is a kind of like sub feature or like something that you're working on that's small and that you want to merge into another one and you're going to address the break or you're going to address the, the test is failing um but you're just going to address it in like a different branch uh we're, we're not advocating the fact that a test is broken then we just ignore it <laughs> yeah yeah so so I, I i could i could just go into um uh, this function here so i could actually go instead of uh, skipping it so i just remove that line for 27 i just go and go into main and i can look at my bad function it seems complete that line um and i can i can quickly look at it and go like, all oh, right, yeah, that plus one is probably wrong. Um, I'm going to fix that. So I'll just quickly change that and I have saved the file. Um, so you can see there's no dot up there. Um, and then I'm going to do um, git adds. So I've, I've been um, more proactive and actually fixed the problem, the root cause, instead of just ignoring it. Um, so git add dot, git commit. Um, unskip test and fixed. Push. And again, if we go back to pull requests, it will note it. It will say some tests haven't completed yet. And it will go through and hopefully those tests will pass. And you can see here as it goes through the thing. So it actually might give us a nice live view. So look, yep, it's gone. Come through. Uh, that's a bit oddly. Look. There we go. Sometimes the, the, the view is a bit odd. But yeah, we can see now that it's now all the tests are passing. So we can be happy, healthy. Okay. So now we've got a nice um, uh, passing working uh, branch um i am happy for this to be merged in so i'm going to click the merge pull request button here and it's going to come up with a nice little um commit message and yep i'm just going to leave it as is and commit okay and it's all successfully merged and closed and it's now if i go back to the code Yeah. Yeah, sorry, it was, was a bit quick. Um, but if you've got the skip stuff in there, it will work anyway. It's, it's there. I, the main thing I want to show you is, you know, you can, um, once it's once it's happy, it will let you um, merge things in. You can see here the run PyTest YAML, and you can see that's now in the main dealer branch. We call that ready to go. Okay. So um, something that's um, it's important to, to think about is, okay, why, why did I go and create a, a new broad, new job instead of a, oh, sorry, why don't I go, go and um, create additional job on the, on the hello world, um, or, or hello world file instead of, and instead create a new workflow. Um, and this is a good question that's sort of been asked quite a few times. Um, and so you might want to expand existing workflow. Um, so if we just bring up uh, repository as an example, um, if let's say I, I wanted to add in um, something else after this, maybe some linting or something like that, um, I, I could simply just add it in as a new, you know, as a new action. So let's go here, I could, Simply do linting and create a new job and go into here and, and do all that stuff. So, um, I, could, I, could, I could do that. 
Um, and, and that is good if we are, um, this is good if your triggers are the same. So if we want to lint on it in a pull request, um, we'll keep it the same. Or, or it's possible to pass the output of one job into another. So maybe we wanted to run the tests and then maybe run some code after that, but only if the test passes. And we could do we could do that, and we won't go into that. But that that's something you can explore in your own time. Um, and also, you could like force things to execute in particular orders. So you can say like, um, wait for this job to complete um, before doing this one. However, here we created a whole new workflow, and then we're doing this because we want the workflow triggers um, to to happen off complete different events. So before we just wanted to do on a manual trigger. Um, on, on a workflow dispatch, where here, while well, we did have workflows dispatch, we mainly wanted it to happen on a um, on particular types of pull request events. Uh, we want the jobs, we want the jobs to be highly isolated to the effects of others. Um, so, um, uh, you know, one job could change some code in some reason, and we don't want it to affect another one, uh, um, or or we just want them to, you know. But we don't really care about them sharing stuff um, and, and we just want them to be separate. Or we're just doing something very different and it just makes logical sense to just separate those out. So um, someone doesn't come along and look at the file and go, wait, okay, it's doing this one thing, but it's also doing this completely other thing. Why are those together? It can be a bit confusing. So sometimes just separating as different files can just nicely tidy up things. Um, use your discretion, but the, the main reasons are what your triggers are, really. Um, so if your triggers are the same, maybe think about adding a new job to workflow. If you've got different triggers, then you might want to just create a new file. Okay, we've got a 15 minute break. Um, uh, yes, yeah, we've got um, on time for a break. Um, it does, yeah, does anyone have any questions before we dive into the break? Um, or if you want to go on the break and ask them after that, that's also fine. Okay, I'm gonna uh, take the silence as um, go on a break. Um, so we're gonna have a 15 minute break, uh, roughly. So that means coming back at 25 to, so 11.35, we're going to get restarted. Um, so yeah, a bit of a longer break, uh, but feel free in the, in the meantime to ch chuck questions in the chat um, and, and we can have a look at them after that. Um, and when we're going to get into looking at environment variables, secrets and the GitHub CLI um, and see what we can do with that. So it should be quite exciting. But yeah, um, see you all in um, around uh, 14, 15 minutes. Okay, welcome back everyone. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, right, so we're going to um, dive next into um, exploring um, environment variables and secrets. Um, so you might have in, um, encountered uh, environment variables um, before in your in your coding journey. Um, however, to give you a quick sort of introduction to what they are, um, they're basically um, external resources that sit outside of your steps and jobs, and, and this is within the context of GitHub Actions. Um, so basically, allow you to share variables and data between your steps. Um, although not workflow, so they, they get put into the um, uh, put into sort of the box that you're setting up for for your jobs. Um, it is um, it got, got a nice example over here of, of how environment variables can be can be used and defined. So um, we can see here that um, at the start of a workflow. Um, two environment variables uh, such as mascot and super duper bar are being defined in something called the env and that's the environment um, and, and they will be accessible in all our different jobs. Um, and we can look in uh, down in, in one of our steps here. Um, we've got one step here which is run echo high and then oh, 
sorry, that was an eclipse. Um, high uh, and, and max mascot. So this this um, bracketing here and and the the dollar sign um, basically allows us to access um, objects in our M super M, and then we put the um, the sort of variable name, um, and that we can see here will print out high um, Mona. Um, then uh, we can also, so that, that's just accessing it from up here. We can also redefine it um, or, or initially define it in, in a single step um, by passing something to the env and, and the mascot uh, variable. So we see here how we redefined it. And then when it comes to run echo, I'm sorry, I keep clicking. Um, I need to pause it, that hub. Um, it's, uh, it goes to run this, but before it actually runs this command, um, it goes and looks in the local M for that we defined here. And it's seen here, we define it as Octocat, and it says hi Octocat. Um, and finally, we can we can sort of define it for, for the job itself. Um, and uh, so, so you can see here, in for all the things in this job, we just redefined the mascot as Tux, and you can see here that um, it, it's, it's use that. So here it has looked, okay, it hasn't got it redefined in the env like we've got here. So it's going to go and look up some next level. So it looks up in the env level, uh, also the job level, and you can see, all right, it's redefined here. And that means it ignores what it's set up here. Um, so the closer it is, the more, it, you know, it'll go grab that value. Um, so yeah, you can see here how we can sort of uh, set up these uh, environment variables um, to to be shared uh, and 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 uh, define these these useful variables that we want to reuse. Um, and yeah, it's possible to dynamically set them. And um, so here we've got them statically, sort of like we risked it out, where we statically said every time it runs, it's going to be Octocat. However, um, as I'll show you in our example in a bit, um, we are able to. Um, to, to define these on the fly. Um, and each time it runs, it could be different. Um, there's loads of default variables defined by GitHub. Um, and hopefully Harry will pop um, a link um, to, to this in the chat where you can go through and explore all the default, default environment variables that GitHub will automatically set up for you um, in a workflow uh, that you can access easily. Okay. GitHub secrets. Um, so these are variables. These are special type of variables that want to be security, securely saved. Um, so they're not easy to see. So the, for example, it could be personal access tokens or it could be like um, sort of deployment tokens um, or, or um, uh, if you're accessing database, maybe information about the database, database access stuff. And we can set these um, secrets in the repository settings. Um, we can also set environment variables here as well, but um, maybe we'll use these for secrets. Um, and um, we can access these like access these like just quite like environment variables. Um, and we can see here we've got a um, a, a action where it's predefined. Um, so we can see here it, it, it's uh, we're using the predefined actions labeler. Label and we're going to pass it um, the GitHub token, and we're going to go to secrets, and we're going to pass it uh, the, the GitHub token. This is automatically set up for us um, uh, by, by GitHub um, to, to allow you access to your repository. The um, reason we have to pass it through is because um, predefined actions don't automatically get passed. Um, uh, secrets because they're secret and you know if, if they were able to access them automatically you could have a malicious uh, action that would read um, uh, read that secret and send it off um, to some attacker um, so they, so we have to deliberately pass them through um, and and we know this is ones by github so we know it's safe to pass through this information okay um and, and we can see here sort of uh, how, how it looks on on the on GitHub, um, how we create this. And and don't worry, uh, we, we'll we'll go. Um, uh, it is is well sort of explained on on the GitHub um, 
thing, but I'll actually quickly show you now where we can where we can set those. Um, there we go. That's how it's posted in the chat. Um, but just to show you, so in our repository, if we go along to settings. Okay. And we're going to go to, I believe it is, no, uh, it's actions. So I'm just, there we are. Sorry, I'm being, I'm being um, very blonde. Um, so we actually go, sorry, secrets and variables. And we'll go actions. Sorry about that. Okay. And we can see here we've got environment secrets and repository secrets. So we're just like adding new uh, repository secrets. Um, so we're going to add it here and we just simply give it a name and put our secret in there. So if we've got a personal access token that we want to give it um, for a particular service, we can do that. And we can also do similar stuff for variables, like I mentioned before. So very easy to add. Okay. So um, let's turn off the laser pointer. There we go. Okay, GitHub CLI. So um, GitHub has a um, command line um, interface um, that is really, really powerful and allows you to sort of interact with GitHub from your command line. Um, and, and this means that um, we can use the sort of the, the, the run fields in, in steps um, to, to interact with GitHub directly. And we can do lots of different stuff. So we can use this uh, GitHub auth um, command, uh, which allows you to log into GitHub and like authenticate your system. So if you're like setting up your computer to work with GitHub, um, you, you can use this command instead of uh, other methods. Um, uh, we don't need to do this in actions as it's automatically done. Um, GitHub is great at automatically automating these things. However, there's other stuff we might want to do as well, like create a pull request or like using the command line. We can create, we can merge, we can merge pull requests. Instead of going in manually to the code, um, uh, so manually to GitHub and then clicking through the buttons, we can we can run this command and it'll do it for us. Um, and you'll see us do that in a bit. Um, you can also do the same for releases. Um, if you don't know what releases are, we'll, we'll talk them, about them in a bit. Um, but we can, you can draft, you can view, and you can publish releases. And you can do so much more stuff. Like you can work with your, um, you can send commands to do stuff for your repos, uh, or you can like um, manage your code spaces or even your workflows, uh, which is great. And to use um, uh, uh, GitHub CLI, and it uses the still GH um, to signify it, uh, alias to signify it. Um, using an action, we, we will need to pass through and add um, this this uh, the GitHub token um, to the environment uh, workflow, workflow. And this again is this is a default um, thing that's created by GitHub that just gives us access, um, gives us a personal access token that just goes to the repository that we're working with in the action. Okay, so um, with, with that knowledge. Um, we are going to have a look into uh, creating a pull request automatically. Um, uh, before we before we do this, um, it is uh, important to think. Okay, why why are we doing this? Um, and I'm going to bring up um, the repository to 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 talk through this. So um, we've got our develop branch here. Um, and what we want to do is uh, we want to start thinking about a process where we're going to automatically deploy to this live branch here. Um, so th this could be um, a, a particular branch where we've got, you know, um, we do stuff and it's it basically our live version of code. Um, and, and this is just the example we've, we've created for, for this um uh, this workshop um you you might have a different thing but it, it, it's 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 good to to think about okay right we're going to automatically um create uh we want to automatically create a pull request when we're ready to release this this um live branch so we're going to go through and sort of create a process for this yes uh, what we call production okay um, so 
I'm just going to set them to flip it. Okay, so um, what our process is going to be is that, um, that, we, that we want to basically uh, automate a bit is when we're ready to push um, or release code from develop to live, um, we are going to uh, create a new branch and we're going to create a new release branch and we're going to call it, and we're going to give it a version name. Zero point. Let's call it that. Okay. Um, so we could call it release forward slash version 0 0.1.0. 0. Um, the reason we're calling it, uh, it got the V. So this is um, I think semantic versioning. Um, and it's basically, a, you might, might see this on your, um, on software you use and stuff like that, where I have, have these, these three numbers and we've basically got this um, major, minor, and uh, sort of patch version numbers. Um, so we're just going to do like a minor release um, to, to our sort of live or production branch. Uh, when we create this, we want uh, the system to automatically create a pull request for us to, to automate this process. Um, I'm going to create the branch now. Okay, so we create this branch um, and we want it to automatically go in and create a new pull request for this branch. I'm going to change it to target instead of, we're going to get release. And instead of targeting develop here as our base, so this is where it's going to go, the code is going to end up, I'm going to change this to live. Okay, and this will, um, this will add all our changes and we can create a pull request. Okay, we just want it to basically do this. And actually, we don't want it to create a fully open one. We're actually going to get it to create a branch and it's going to convert this to draft. Okay, so we can see it here, it's, it's a draft. That's ready to be done. You can see here, because it's a new pull request, it's, it's running our previous action automatically. So this is really nice. So we can now, you know, have part of our release process. We can have it automatically um, check that we are um, doing a healthy release. Um, however, that's a manual process. That's a bit boring. We don't want to do that. We want to automate that a bit. Um, so what actually I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, close this pull request. So I just go down here and close it and should come up closed. And then I'm just going to go into our branches. Actually, here. Actually, because we're not going to use this, I'm just going to delete it. Okay. So let's go back into our code space and we're going to create an action that's going to automatically um, do some of that for us. Gonna close this down. Let's clear things up. All my terminal as well. Okay, we're going to go into GitHub workflows again, and we're going to create a new file, and we're going to call this um, create release yaml. We give it a name. Create requests we're going to give it a trigger and this time we're going to do it give it the trigger on a push so when it sees a branch that is pushed to and we're going to say only when it's pushed to particular branches 
And we're going to give it a short list of the branches that we want it to be triggered on. And I'm going to give it just the thing release star. So what this does is um, GitHub looks for pushes to branches that start with release. So this is, if you're familiar with regex, this is a little of regex and simply saying, uh, it's going to start with release forward slash and then anything after that, it'll match. I'm also going to give it a workflow dispatch. Well, just in case we want to manually trigger this thing. Okay. Now we're going to give it some jobs. Oh, and I just noticed I am on the wrong branch. So apologies. Joe, what branch should we be on? Uh, so we need to create a new uh, a new branch. Um, Git check out develop. Sorry. Okay. Uh, I just need to. Silly of me. I just copied what's the content of that. I'm just going to delete that. Clear up my workspace. So I've just reversed the changes. Check out develop. Get cool. So I just checked out the verb, pulled in the latest version, and now I'm going to jit check out um, B, and we're going to call this JW. Um, Yeah. Okay. So again, we're going to create the file um, called rates release yaml. And I already created the stuff, I copied it through, so I just copied it over there. And if you didn't copy it over, here is the here's the code so far. Okay, jobs. Uh, create PR. So we're just going to give it the ID create PR. As usual, we're going to run on onto latest. And I'm going to remove that S there because I did a typo. and give it a number of steps for us to run. So first step is maybe um, name, check out code, and it's gonna use actions, check out, at version three. Before we have just used that uh, default things. However, um, we need to um, uh, pass a, a variable to it. And we need to pass through the fetch depth input to it. So if you control click on here, and we have a look down. Uh, we can look through the different uh, width inputs that we have, and we're just going to look for fetch depth. Fetch depth. So the fetch depth is another commits to uh, fetch. Zero indicates all history for all the branches and tags. By default, it's one. So by default, it'll only fetch the most recent uh, commit. However, we want it um, to uh, create a pull request for this branch. Um, and what we want to do 
is we want to um, get the whole history because we're creating a pull request. So we're going to give it a fetch def zero. And the reason it does fetch depth one and just does the most recent commit is because it wants to be nice and efficient and only get the relevant information. Um, so usually, if we're, we're checking something out, we're going to add on after it, aren't we? So in this uh, in this scenario, um, you know, where we're actually developing the code, we've created a new branch called JW create PR action, and we're going to just add on to it. So we're only concerned about that last commit and what we need to proceed from there. However, here, because we're doing stuff that's going to involve in comparing the history, um, we want Git to have all the information it needs. So we're going to fetch to zero. Okay, um, next one is going to be our create request. And we're gonna say that's the name. And this is gonna run some commands. And actually it's gonna only run one command which is gr pr, so github, um, create a pull request, create, and then we're gonna give it the fill tag. So this tag here, this flag here, will automatically fill the, um, the title and description of the pull request. And we're gonna do, give it a draft. So we're gonna say, make this pull request a draft. We're then going to pass it the base flag. So this is saying which, um, for the pull request, which one are we going to target? Which one do you want to merge into? I'm going to base, and I'm going to specify that as live, because by default, the default branch is develop. So by default, it will go into develop, which we don't want. We want it to release to, to live. So we're going to specify it, go point to life. Okay. Now, um, because we're using um, uh, the GitHub CLI, we need to provide it with a, a token. So we're going to provide it. GitHub token. Look at our early thing. So we're going to give it the github.token. Um, now, it might be the case where we want to do stuff on another repository or something like that. This GitHub token is, um, sorry, it's been stupid. Uh, this token is only scoped for the local repository. Um, so that means that only, uh, it only works on GitHub Actions Workshop and it only works on my version of GitHub Actions Workshop. Um, if we had a scenario where we wanted to deploy to another repository or something like that, um, we would need to create our own personal access token and add that to the secrets and manually do that. Um, so, however, we're just going to leave it as the default. Uh, it should work just fine. So we can give that a save. Oh, it's, it's determined to change the spacing. I'm just going to let it do it. It won't hurt the thing. It's just a formatting thing. Um, uh, we're going to do git, uh, git add, everything, git commits, dash m, The message adds create release PR action. Get push, and then we, I'll just show you what happens if I just do get push. It's not very happy about it, so it's just asking us to set that stuff. And actually, we, it gives us the uh, nice 
command here, which we can copy and paste in. So earlier when I did uh, dash u, that's just the same thing. Okay, that's been pushed up. Okay. So that's been, that's been all created. Um, what we're gonna do is we're just simply gonna create a new pull request for that and get that merged in for now. We're gonna go here, change this to my repository and we want the compare to be create PR action. Create pull request. Do that. We need to wait for these checks to be done. So we need, yep. I'm going to wait for this just because it's good to do. And set some progress. Good, all happy. Let's merge. Let's click the branch. On here, I'm just going to do accounts develop. So here, I've just gone back to develop and I've, I've pulled in the changes. Okay, that's all successful. So uh, what we're going to do now, uh, if we just go into actions, we can see here, we got um, create pull request for release branch. And this will, we could trigger this now and it'll create a pull request. So we could actually do that. So we do run workflow, we just run it. And we'll just double check it works. Okay, that's worked. I'm going to go pull request, and we can see here that it's got a draft thing. And we see it's all filled out and everything like that. It's all really nice. Okay, uh, we can't do any like merging or thing. It's still a work in progress. I can see here none of the checks have run yet um, because we don't, you know, um, because how we set them up. However, what, how we actually want it to work, how we want to actually just double check this works, is we want to create a new release branch. I would call this version 0 0.1.1. Create that release branch from develop. I'm going to go back to actions. I can see here that has already triggered um, a some actions. So okay, and that's worked. I'm going pull request, and hey, look, it's created a nice little release. Right, and we say here. Okay, it's got one successful check. And that's just mean it's the action associated with this branch has, has worked. So we can see here that it's, it's, it's worked all health, healthily. Now, um, I realize we're running a bit over time. Um, however, uh, I just want to explain this, explain this thing. Um, something bad happens with our, with our code. Well, not something bad, but something inconvenient happens when... Uh, when something happens to our code. And I just go on to show you that here. If I check out, we click git pull, and git checkout release version 0 0.1. Okay. And what I'm going to do is for this release, uh, so for, for this branch, I'm just going to create a little text file. Um, let's call it changes.txt. And the branch. 
Um, you, you shouldn't really be directly changing a release branch, uh, but I just want to demonstrate something that's going to happen for, um, for you. Um, I'm going to save those changes. And we're going to go get ads and get commits and and the changes. And what we're going to do is get push. Now have a think of what's going to happen with our action. It's going to see a push to a branch called release. Uh, it starts with a release. And it's going to try and create a new pull request for it. However, we've already got a pull request. I wish GitHub would, would add a feature here where you could tell it to ignore um, if there's a live thing. It might have added it actually, um, and I'm not realized. But because hopefully this will actually fail and cause some issues. So I'm going to do a commit. I'm going to have a look at our actions. I'm going to have a look at what happens with this action here because it's been triggered again. So I'm going to see what happens. There we go, it's failed. So they haven't added this feature. So uh, if we have a look here, a pull request for branch releasing uh, already exists. So it's failed. Um, now this could be a really a good task for you to go away and see if you can uh, come up with a really elegant method to do so. Um, I've uh, uh, earlier have, have sort this as, sorted this out myself. Um, and I uh, came up with, with the code for it. I'm going to share with you. I'm just going to double check if everything's correct. Okay. So if I go into my action here and I'm just going to replace the code in the create pull request with this code here. And this is just some batch scripting. I'm just going to check if, um, if a pull request already exists for, um, for that, uh, uh, for, for the, the, the ref name. And we're just going to commit that, and it should work. Uh, git commit uh, dash m. Oh, git add, sorry. Okay, and that's that's fixed our problem. So um, I'll pop the code in the chat um, that you can do. Uh, we need to have a break now. Um, sorry, I've run a bit over with that uh, exercise. Um, so uh, we will have a quick uh, five minute break. Um, and uh, shall we come back at uh, 19 minutes too? Oh, sorry, I haven't added that to the correct chat. I've added. Okay, so we'll be back in five minutes um, for the last leg of it. Cool.
Right, welcome back everyone. Um, pop a emoji in chat if you're back and ready and rearing to go. Okay, looks like we've got some life in the chat. Um, so that's good. Um, so, um, in the break, me and Harry just had a look at the time and the timetable. Um, and we are sort of quickly coming on the end of the session. Um, so, so, what we might do is uh, instead of going in detail through exercise um, four, I might um, give you all a bit of homework. Um, and um, what I'll do is I will um, go for the next book and I'll share the code um, for, for the final action, show it in action and show it what it does. And then um, sort of invite you all to sort of, uh, to, to all go away and have a look at what it's doing um, and see if you can work out how it's working, how you can replicate it. Um, and yeah, and you can uh, contact me um, or Harriet if you have any questions uh, about it. Um, but I think there's some stuff we want to wrap up with um, at the end uh, that we would rather um, prioritize over the, the, the final little exercise. Um, so I hope that's all okay. Um, so uh, to, to finish up, uh, well, to, to, to talk about the next thing is we're going to uh, explore um, what releases are quickly. So if you're not familiar with what releases are, um, they are a, a nice little um, uh, feature uh, provided by GitHub, and it's based on something called um, Git tags, and basically they allow you to mark and publish your progress. Um, so Git tags allow you to tag a specific point in repository, and then GitHub releases uh, sort of builds on top of that. Um, so you can think of releases as like a package iteration. Um, so you usually send them out with a with some um, release notes and change logs. And you can see here um, uh, on the right, so you can see here are uh, the wrap community practice and we have uh, releases and you can see here we we, um, we do a release when we're publishing new or updating existing guidance you might do it if you've got a pipeline and you've got a new version of that pipeline um, uh, that you want to to release and show off uh, you might do a release for that and it's, yeah it's good it's a good way to just go like put a nice line down and go like hey this this is um, uh, when we've like released a lot of stuff um, and it can usually ca catch people's interest um, for the right community practice, we have a series of workflows and GitHub actions um, that allow us to help automate this uh, release process. Um, some of you might have um, seen me talking about it at the NHSR conference um, a month or so ago, um, and and this is and, and working that really really uh, got me into GitHub actions and and sort of led to this workshop today. So exercise four, uh, drafting a release. Um, so the final act, the final action was to um, basically allow us to automatically uh, draft a release note when we had um, merged a release into live. So we got our um, uh, release branch here and we got our release PR um, and we are happy for it to be um, merged into live. And we're gonna go and make it all ready. And we can fit merge request. Um, now it's now it's all ready and and ready thing is just going to run the pi test for us and before that we want to uh when we want when we merge this into our live we want to automatically create a release pro, uh, release note for ourselves um we could do this manually but we, we are lazy um and we want this automatically done for us um so for this i am going to create a new file um so I'm just going to bring up my side notes. Okay. So yeah, new file. Go for create release. Uh, sorry, create draft release.
And I am going to copy in all of the different, all the code that I've made earlier. I'm just going to make a small little adjustment. Going to use the GIP token. Um, so yeah, I've I've sort of jumped jumped ahead here and just inserted all the stuff. Um, um, but I will just pop it in chat now, and you can have a look through what it's all the stuff it's doing. So different triggers. And the main thing I want to point out uh, for you to look at is this if statement here. So this determine these are if statements determine if a um, if the job here release if merged runs or not. Does a number of checks and then it creates a release note for us. Um, and you can see some familiar stuff going on, like the actions checkout and uh, and yeah, and use of the GitHub CLI. So we've created this. Uh, we're going to save it. We'll get ads and we're going to get commits. Um, and once again, I've rushed into this. Actually, in this instance, I'm going to add, I'm just going to add it directly to this branch because we want to merge this in. Um, so, uh, yeah, let's get added. So, let's status. Action. Adds. Okay, I'm going to go back to here. It's just going to run the checks. I'm going to double check it's going in the right place. So it's going uh, into live from release. I'm going to merge this. I'm going to go to actions and I'm going to see it's going to run this action and it's already run. So we need to merge and we can go to the code and we can see our releases here. And we can see here it's got a draft pull request. We can go in, oh, sorry, draft release and we can go here. Um, I won't go into detail about the release notes, um, but you can see here you can, you know, you can tag it and stuff. Um, you can generate release notes and stuff like that. So it's, it's quite useful. I'm just going to save this from our next draft. Okay. If, you, if you've uh, done this and you've seen the step uh, you, you, and you've merged a live, it just might be just good to make sure your live is up to date with your develop. So I'm just going to go again. Develop. Just make sure develop has got the got a copy of live. Yeah. So that was a quick just demonstration of of how we of other sort of. Um, action to do and yeah the codes in the chat if you want to try and implement that yourself okay uh wrapping up sorry my doorbell is going you might be able to hear in the background um but i'll leave that for now uh probably just a little bit person 
So, um, wrapping up. So, uh, I want to show share with you all um, some useful links. Um, and uh, yeah, with you. Um, so, so the, these are some useful links if you want to explore stuff further. Um, so, we got um, the wrap deployment process. We have a link to that there. Um, and uh, th this is a good example of what you can do with this. Um, and yeah, as I mentioned earlier, sort of sparked the idea of, of, of doing this stuff. Um, got the RAP community practice. So this is, um, uh, I'm part of the RAP squad. Um, and um, uh, we've got a nice website with loads of loads of good guidance um, about using Git and, and stuff like that. Um, so it's definitely worth explore. Um, then uh, we have got uh, the uh, GitHub Actions documentation. This is it's actually really good documentation. It's really improving a lot, um, uh, and and you can uh, get lots of informations, lots of information like about very particular stuff. Um, it's got a very good example of of the different components of uh, GitHub Action, um, and and finally. Um, I thought I thought I'd add in the GitHub status page, uh, which is quite useful. Um, as yesterday, GitHub actions were down. So when uh, me and Harry were preparing for this, uh, we were going, "Oh, our well, number of actions are working. Has something gone terribly wrong? Are we going to cancel tomorrow?" And we just checked on here, and thankfully, uh, it was a it was a temporary little blip they're having, um, and they got that fixed for today. Um, so that's lovely. Um, so. Uh, yeah, we wanted to uh, sort of hire again a bit more the the um, the the actions I, I developed for the wrap release process. And here's a little diagram of, of how how it works, um, and and sort of give a little promotion um, because quite if you're in the NHS, you might have a scenario where you are working on and we, you know in NHS we, we quite like working on a nice private branch uh sorry a nice private repository um sort of out of sight of the public uh just where we can you know uh, develop our codes and when it's ready ready for uh ready and, and we want to get it published out and show what we've done um we will then move it over to a public repository and and show it off um, doing this has been quite a manual and fiddly process um, and, and not a very good rap way. Um, and, and we'll be doing this in the, in the rap community practice. Um, so to make it uh, rap compliance, develops this, um, this series of actions, which um, like I was showing you today, where it's, it's taken code from develop and moved it over to live. Um, it's gone from a private repository to a public repository. Um, and it's really, really worth going through and having a look at that code, see what you can uh, take for it and, and reuse. And particularly if, you, if you've got a scenario where you are moving from private to public uh, repositories where you have to like uh, 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 publish your code in the open, um, feel free to, to reuse it, copy and paste stuff over. Um, hopefully in the future we will get it nicely packaged up um, into into a pre-existing action. So like where you went for actions checkouts, you can do NHS digital, or, you know, so like that and um, uh, uh, publish or so like that, and and you'll be able to give it some variables, and it will automatically do this a nice process of getting it um, from private to public. Um, what next? Yeah, so so as well as checking out our, our stuff, um, really want to to finish off with uh, sort of opening up discussion and um, and sort of encourage you to start thinking about um, how you're going to use GitHub Actions. You might already come into this with some ideas, um, uh, or you just might come in this with some curiosity about what GitHub Actions are. I'm not really not sure what you could do with it. Um, but there's so much stuff we can do. So like you can, uh, as we've shown, we can implement automated testing in your project and make sure your code is always tested to the full extent before it's merged. Um, uh, you can um, automatically you know, update your code in the open 
um, or uh, so, or in with the rap community practice, uh, we we use this process to uh, automatically publish our documentation as a website. So if you use Quarto or MK Docs or any, any other package, you might want to uh, have your have your um, your markdown automatically created into an HTML website. Um, uh, you might uh, have a pipeline there um, that you want to put out in the, out in the open. Um, it, it probably is a scenario where if you're publishing your pipeline, you might not, uh, it might be using uh, uh, PID um, as part of it. So you might not want people to have access to that. Um, so you could uh, have it automatically run with artificial data. So a member of the public can come and have a look and see how it runs, or you know, someone can uh, come and go like, all right, can I incorporate this into my pipeline? And they can test it out with some artificial data. Um, or if your if your pipeline uses public data, um, uh, public available data, uh, then then you might want it to run automatically. Although do do bear in mind that. Um, if it's processing a lot of data and stuff like that, really bear in mind that that might start incurring costs for you. Um, so have a look into um, uh, your the usage that you, the free usage you can get from from GitHub um, uh, with with uh, your actions. Um, it might be the scenario where you want to host your own run or something like that um, for this stuff. But yeah, something to keep in mind. Or, um, yeah, you can make sure your um, project is written in style com consistently. Um, as uh, um, as uh, Harriet talked about earlier, like the example of, you know, you might have, two people might have different coding styles and you don't want people to be focusing on those minor corrections of like, oh, you need to, you know, um, uh, add a space here. You need to uh, give a type hint here or you need to document this thing a particular way here. Um, you don't want to manually do that. You would rather a computer that goes automatically through it and, and will flag those stuff up for you. Um, so it it is uh, important to, uh, it can be very useful to, to implement this stuff. And, and you know, especially the testing and the, the linting can be very quick and easy wins for you to add into your repository. Um, so yeah, um, one, one final thing um, that I want to do before we finish up or, and open up to sort of general questions, I, I just want to show you how to uh, shut down your code space at the end um, and just, just clear things up. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our, our code space here and uh, can I just hide this? Uh, hide, no. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm just going to close down my code space here. Okay. Um, and I want to make sure it's nicely closed down. So I could go here and code code spaces, and it it shows here that it's got a um, an active thing here. Um, and what you can do is you can quickly just go to these three hours here and you can stop your code space. Um, um, you could keep it. Um, so you can see here it expires one month after shutdown. Um, yeah, you could just stop it or you could completely delete it. Um, another place you can look just to, if you um, want a more general view, uh, you can go to believe it is on the left hand burger uh, where is it so i'm being cut the, the, the top left burger icon the three lines right at the top left of your screen yeah, yeah. there you go wrong side thank you <laughs> yeah so up here you got here and you got uh, code spaces. Um, and we can see I've got a couple, a couple open. Um, so I'm just going to stop the scope space. And then I'm actually going to delete it. Do be warned if you delete it, that's everything inside gone. Um, 
although obviously your code that is um on the on your branch on the repo is still there it doesn't delete yeah. any of that it's um, if, if you haven't pushed something up or you haven't saved something then yeah it will um that will be lost but everything else is kept just like if you you know uh destroyed your computer for some reason um then you know whatever's on the computer will be lost but you know if you've back stuff up um to get up and stuff like that or um another thing then it'll be it'll be safe there okay Let's just go back and i can just double check here yep it's got no code spaces and it's inviting me to create a new code space under that right i think that's everything um yeah, has anyone got any questions? We'd be particularly interested to hear, you know, if you've got some idea that you think you could do with GitHub Actions, or you could try out with CI CD, but you're not sure, or maybe you, you're not sure if it's possible to do, um, please ask, because uh, we, can, we can see if you can help. We can see if we can help out with that as well. Um, as well as, uh, yeah, I just I just wanted to kind of summarize what Joe said at the end. Um, please do check out the um, recording of Joe's previous session, which goes through the uh, action that he's working on, which is um, automatically um, uh, kind of updating a public version of a repository that is mainly developed on in private um, because it's it's a really useful tool. And when it comes, when it's published on the GitHub Actions Marketplace, um, we'll do some more communication about that. And hopefully that will be useful for, for you as well. Um, you'll see a lot of our guidance uh, talks about kind of developing in the open, which is obviously um, a great goal to have. But if you work in an environment which requires you to deal with sensitive data, um, sometimes the risks of accidentally um, uh, committing that to a repo are too great to be working in the public. So we understand quite a lot of people have to develop in private, but maintaining your code in the public is really hard. It's really annoying. Um, so it will be very easy to kind of ship changes from a private version to a public version. Um, so we'll definitely keep you all posted about that. How do you access the recording? Um, great question it's on youtube but i don't know when i say it's on youtube i don't know whether it's been uploaded yet um i so think I, I think it's it, you know it, it's um as part of all the batch that are becoming as part of the oh wait actually the the, the github the github um instruction version called that's already up on youtube i'll just share a link for that and um, so that's done by me and um uh, helen who's been the call um I'll just quickly get that up. Yeah, so the introduction to version control using Git um, um, was mentioned in this um, session as well. Definitely check that out uh, if you haven't already. But um, the session specifically about that action, Joe's just checking to see if it's been published on YouTube, but it will be at some point. Um, and yeah. thank you all for, for your comments in the chat. Um, great to hear you found it valuable. If you want to leave any feedback, um, to be honest with you, I'm not entirely sure whether there's like a kind of automatic process that the NHS our, NHS our community um, follows. But um, if you do want to um, leave any feedback, you can get in contact um, with us. I think the easiest way to get in contact with us is data science at nhs.net um, and you can send us any feedback you might have um, as well as you've got the link to the repo um, the repository um, so you could um, uh, start a discussion there or submit an issue or write a comment um, with any anything you'd like to kind of add as a suggestion or any comments you might have there as well and I think that is it. If, if no one has any other questions, um, rather than just keep people on the line, um, we uh, might call it there. Yeah, I'm just going to put in one final um, 
email, which is to the Rap Champions mailbox. So if you've got a more specific question about uh, rap in general, um, uh, then yeah, do get in contact with us there. Um, and but we've got the um, data science one as well for more general data science needs. Um, yeah, thank you much for coming along. Cool. Yes, thank you very much, everybody. Um, and I hope you have a uh, great lunch um, and a great rest of Wednesday. See you soon. That's all. Bye.